Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Welcome to the Whiskey Ramp Podcast. It's a little crusty. It's frustrating. And it's going to be a little bit of a rant. I don't understand it. I don't know why. Some sort of injustice. Anyway, end rant. Hello and welcome back to the Whiskey Ramp Podcast. I'm Jeremy. I am Rob. And tonight, talking master distillers. Yes, um, the effect an elite master distiller has when they potentially leave a distillery, join a new one, what that means for the new distillery, what it means for the old distillery. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, you can see we've got a couple Glen Allekies in front of us tonight. Mm-hmm. We're, ta- we're going to be talking in particular, well, maybe mostly, I guess, about Billy Walker. But we're going to bring up a couple other guys, too, and we're, we're going to get into that. Yeah, Wait. so we've got some of the newer Glen Allekey, the 12-year-old and the 15-year-old. Um, and a kind of a focus that Glen Allekey has done and re-releasing their brand with a focus on sherry casks. What what twelve year old whiskey bottled at forty six percent? Do you know? Can you think of it in a main like their main release, their main twelve year old like standard release looks that color? Yeah, is there? It's one? dark, man. I mean, they use a lot of sherry influence in in this whiskey here. So it's a combination of virgin oak, uh, PX, Oloroso, and bourbon cask. There you go. So four casks. Dark as hell. Yeah. When Billy got there, he must have recasked everything. Because the liquid he was putting out... When did he put out his first whiskey? Probably around like 2018. Between Well, he got yeah, there in 2017. 20, bought they bought it 2016, yeah. right? And then transitional period, Sorry. 2017. Yeah. And then it was, what, 2018 first release? Probably, yeah. Around. So it, they were like clear. Like <laughs> They were like yellow. Yeah. You know, very, you know, like a very, like, it looked like a bourbon cask, although there was some PX cask, some probably really tired Oloroso cask, Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff in there. He kept, like, the format the same, but completely different colored whiskey. And we'll have to cut at some point and I can grab the bottle because I should have thought of that earlier. (laughs) Um, But the, like a drastic color difference. Now the 15 stayed relatively the same, maybe like a tinge darker than last release. Yeah. I mean, to answer your question about what 12 year old whiskey these days has the color of this 12. I mean, maybe you got to go to like Delmore and with all their caramel coloring and to match something like that. Right. Great point. Yeah. uh, Every other whiskey seems they've lightened up Macallan, Glendronic. Yep. Um, you know, those predominantly sherry casks Mm -hmm. um, leaking a little bit. Yeah, and the key here is what it says right on the bottle. Natural color, unchill filtered, 46%. There you go. Right? Dalmore can't say any of those three things. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Right? So... Yeah, and, uh, you know, a little um, uh, timbit of information is that Glendronic is not saying those things anymore either. So a friend of the show, Neil, uh, did some background research for us and showed us the email that Glendronic is chill filtering their whiskey now yeah or at least leaving the door open to chill filter their whiskey yeah they are removing the non-chill filtered descriptor on their labels which is a huge disappointment for a lot of people um Maybe people were hoping it was a, a April Fool's joke a yeah. little early, but uh, yeah, I don't think so. No. I, yeah, so, sorry. It, it does say here, new range of single malts, spring of 2018. That's when when um, Billy Walker released his first range, mm-hmm. which, like I said, was a lot lighter. Right. Glendronic, we're going to talk about this because I, I, I want to dip into the, your thoughts about my theory. You know, I have these theories all the time in the Scotch world. The... Samarolis and the Moon uh, bottlers were run by the mob, or yeah. at least uh, enforced by the mob. That's why they got the great stuff. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I have these theories every once in a while. I have a theory as to why there's a decline in distilleries when the big guns like Billy Walker or Jim McEwen leave a distillery. Right. Um, should I get into it now? Or? Absolutely. All right. This is the Ram so, Podcast. It's story, it's story time already? <laughs> yeah, <we'll do> it. <laughs> it's story time with Rob, guys. <laughs> Sit back, relax. Um, so, Billy Walker and his group bought Glendronic from uh, Bernard Ricard, Ricard I, however that's pronounced. Yeah. Um, Shivas Brothers, back a while back, 2006 it was, something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sounds about right. 
They had it for what? Ten? They were in charge for ten years or so. Yeah, about ten years. Yeah. He turned it from. I think I saw in one of the comments on Aquavite's uh, interview with Billy Walker. He literally has the Midas touch. He turned it into gold. Yeah. What the reputation that Glendronic is still living off of right now mm-hmm. is thanks to Billy Walker. Hundred percent. He then did the same thing, buying from the same group of people when he left and sold Glendronic and, and the Ben Riek and, and Glenn Glossa. But I think his his baby was Glendronic. And that's my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. Sold it for 285 million pounds and left Rachel Berry to take over. Right. Now, what do you think... What do you think the qualifications to be a master distiller are? Like, yeah, there's only you know, it's it's a, it's a couple what hundred jobs and the main yeah. and the big games, right? Like, yeah, the yeah. big the big the distillers, big players, yeah. there's a couple hundred of them, right? So, it's like it's like the NFL. You're not gonna hire a coach for the best team in the league if he's <laughs> like brand new and sucks. You right. know what I mean? Like, you're you're hiring someone with some credentials. You're not. Choosing a guy in the stands, you're like you, right? Yeah. You look like you know about football. You've never coached in the pros before. Right. How will you take over this amazing <laughs> distillery? <laughs> take over this hundred million dollar, whatever. Yeah. So, two hundred eighty-five million pounds. Rachel Berry takes over. Now, big investment for uh, Brown Foreman. Mm-hmm. They put in Rachel Berry in place, and there's a obvious decline in quality in the whiskey. Is it because Rachel Berry is bad and Billy Walker was just that good? That's a possibility. Billy Walker is great. He is turning everything into gold. But my theory is that guys like Billy Walker, guys like Jim McEwen, they have they they have this way with authority. They just they well, Billy Walker was part owner of Glendronic, so he could do whatever the hell he wanted. Nobody's telling Billy Walker what to do. Nobody knows whiskey better than Billy Walker yep. and he's making it that way by buying with a group that he knows trusts his palate so he does what he wants with his whiskeys absolutely Rachel Berry's not coming in and saying I want to choose all these honey barrels and make the best whiskey ever no because no. new investment means new bosses which means tightening the freaking belt that's right which means you know bottom line is where we're looking here this is an investment for us it's not a passion project exactly they don't care. They they put somebody in place that, sure, we want you to know your stuff. We want you to be a smart person. We want you to be a great spokesperson as well. Mm-hmm. But you're not going to have free reign. No. Here's your cask management restrictions. Exactly. Here's our bottom line. Make yeah. it work. Exactly. You're stretching this stuff out. That's right. So, I mean, the price skyrockets for Glendronic, like drastically skyrocketed in the last... I think the, the single cask release this year was absurd. They've gone up. Yeah. yeah. Um, quality has decreased year after year, in my opinion. Um, well, let's talk about that. Because, like, let's go to the 15-year-old. Because that was really, like, the unknown, uh, you know, secret whiskey, you mm-hmm. know, a couple years back. Ralphie introduced it to the world. He named it Whiskey of the Year, one of his years. And it was the buy of the century, yep. right? Because you're getting older whiskey. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was super good. Yep. And now their new 15 uh, is not just Oloroso. It's a mix of Oloroso PX and PX. Yeah. Right? So and it's going to be chill filter. <laughs> right. Um, and it is still a good whiskey. There's nothing about it. It is, mm-hmm. it is still good. But you're not touching what you used to have. I mean, I get that it was older whiskey. But yeah. that's to our point, right? Yeah. So... I feel like we do have to give like a little bit of credit where credit due. Adam Hennett, he knows what he's doing. Like he took over Brook Laddie, he knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Is he gonna get the the same free reign? Probably not, right? Probably not. They like we said. And what's another thing that happened as soon as Jim McEwen left Brook Laddie, the prices skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. What happened? Octomore ten point one or ten point three versus Octomore eleven point three. Yeah, did they add like thirty year old whiskey to it because <laughs> it, the price would indicate that they did, but right. they probably didn't. Yeah, right. Um, you you went from a legend of a master distiller to a guy that really like unless you're in Scotland and you're following very closely, most people didn't know who Adam Hennett was before he took over. Sure. So, again. Are they, are they just putting in? I don't. I, I don't want to call these 
master distillers puppets but people that they can mold to how they see business and that's a for unfortunately the biggest thing for these guys is making a business right making money yeah and i mean going into uh greg Al- uh, glenn Alecky and knowing the stocks that were there and having the vision to be like you know what i can work with this i can you know yeah. uh, they have invested they invest 100 million pounds a year into their sherry casks that's crazy and they're redefining the characteristic of this distillery. now i'm not 100 percent sure but i think clan before was mainly used in blends yeah, yeah right? they, were, they were a majority blended blended uh, outsourcer yep uh, i tried a 25 year old we tried a 25 year old glen uh but that was an independent bottler okay yeah. so they were probably they, you could probably find a whole bunch but again, Billy Walker went in there and there was a lot, like, I think what he did was out of the options that were available, he walked into Glen Alec, he said, there's a lot of old whiskey here. A lot of it's in tired casks. Give me a couple years with these guys. I can re like return around all these casks, make mm-hmm. some into new oak, some into this, some into that. He's releasing 30 year old single casks that are like... 10 shades darker than these Man, black right coffee black, yeah. coffee black um how is he doing that he it's not from what was there already i don't think i think see, the rule is is that you throw that into an oloroso cask as long as it came out of one oloroso cask after the fact you can call it just an oloroso cask you don't have to say finished in an oloroso cask right i think ralphie talks about that recently yeah in one of his videos there's an interesting thing with calling it single cast too because if you look at what um uh, Kilcarran did there was 15 year old special releases they all say they're single cast right. but they're not but they're they double were, maturation they're double maturation they used to be ex-bourbon that's right you know and then they spent five years in, in Oloroso or whatever it was and then they, you know single cast right in the front label yeah so there's a lot of manipulation with with the wording and and they're allowed to do it they're doing everything within the legal mm-hmm. rules um and I think Jim, uh, sorry, uh, Billy Walker is really taking advantage of that because, I mean, these two, well, the 15 did, but that also came out, what, for the first time in 2019, mm-hmm. right? Whereas the first batch, the first rollout of the 12-year-old did not look like that. The first rollout of the 10-year-old cast strength, batch one, was, it looked like it was in a tired bourbon cask. Right. Right? Yeah. Same thing. With the second, the second got a touch darker. Then the third got a bunch darker. Fourth, recently won uh, whiskey of the year, world whiskey of the year yep. for its category or for twelve and under. Yeah, we may, we may have talked about that whiskey before. Yeah, I think we, <laughs> I think I uh, overhyped the hell out of it, but I guess for good reason because it just won whiskey of the year. There you go. Um, and now batch five is coming out, and batch five is, I think. Those four normal casts that he tends to use in all of his younger expressions, so Mm -hmm. ex-bourbon, XPX, Oloroso, and uh, Virgin. uh, Virgin. And then he's adding a Roja cask. Oh, a Roja cask. Yeah, Yeah. so that should be interesting. Yeah. Uh, We will be receiving those very shortly, actually. I am excited for that. Yeah. uh, Roja cask, the only other time I think I've had one is is the uh, Twisted Tattoo, right? Uh, yeah, same with me. I don't think I've had Highland anything. Park. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I like that expression a lot. Yeah, it was very good. So very curious. Our boy, um, our boy Daniel, got those for us. Yeah, he's a man. Yeah, he he managed to get those for us. So pretty excited about that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so now Billy Walker goes to Billy Walker with three other people. Um, what says it? Where does it say it? I forgot the names. Oh, uh, Trish Savage mm-hmm. and uh, Stevenson Gord, uh, not Gord. Anyway, those three bought Glen Alkey, right. and we're gonna have a look at the next, I would say, ten years of Glen Alkey, and pretty much he started to already mold it to, you know, his next legend. Like, yeah, you know. And I'm I'm already impressed. I, I know I I talk about the and this is my idea to talk about Billy Walker tonight as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just because I I, I love Glen Alecky and I love what he did with Glendronic and I love the fact that as soon as he left, 
Not that I love it, but it's kind of funny that as soon as he left, they went to shit. <laughs> so I don't know if I'd go as far as saying they're shit. I no, mean, no, but they went from they're, uh, 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 yeah, they're not what they used to be. Yeah, I think they went from being on everybody's top five list to I don't even know. Like, yeah. there's nothing that interests me about what they're doing right now. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not buying any of their single casks. I'm not. I'll be interested to know like what Billy Walker his long term goal is, and I haven't watched all of Aquavite's interview, and you guys should watch that because he does two hours with them. Yeah, um, I only caught a little bit of it, but is his plan to go to the to essentially like distillery hop and like you know find the next diamond in the rough and shape it into something really nice, and then move along and do the next thing, and do the next thing, and continue to just build equity in these distilleries, right? Yeah. Like I don't know what they bought that group of with Glendronic in it, but I'm sure they made a nice little profit in the 10 years they had it. Oh, absolutely. Well, he sold, he sold that. I don't know. What, yeah. I don't know what he paid right. to get it, but I don't think it was very much. I'm sure we could find it. He sold it for 285 million pounds. Sure. So that's, that's huge, huge money. It's no, it's no chump change. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, now Brown, Brown Foreman has a hold of it and who knows what they're going to, I mean, Brown Brown Foreman is a prime example of a company that really they're they're looking at the bottom dollar. Yeah, that's what they care about, and I think unfortunately I think Glenn Jarnock is going to suffer for it. Yeah, I I feel like Jim McEwen left Brooklady in better hands than than um, than Billy Walker left Glenn Jarnock just because, and I'm not blaming again. I'm not blaming Rachel Berry. I'm blaming the fact that. Rachel Berry can probably be controlled and the wrong companies in place for, in my opinion. Sure. Company. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what we're talking about, right? It's like, yeah. you know, we're putting in someone that, you know, you're not getting free reign, but you got to do your best. And now Rachel Berry's like her, um, blends of the grandeur have been really good. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. it's what forecast. It's forecast. Anyone could go into there and pick out forecast and, and make a nice blend. Right? And you would assume that if she's picking something called the grandeur, Right, like she's allowed a little bit more wiggle room. You know what? Those, those. Let's be honest. Those casts were probably marks when she got there. Yeah, <laughs> like you know, this is these are grand. It's possible. Cast. Yeah. So the story goes, uh, it was in the Water of Life, the movie The Water of Life or Water of Life. Mm-hmm. Um, when Jim McEwen left Brook Laddie, he gave Adam Hennett um, the recipe for black art. Oh, okay. And Adam Hennett took it, walked away thought about it and ripped it up right so that's the story whether it's true or not that's the way adam hannett tells it it's a cool story to tell it's a cool story i mean yeah it's like this is my distillery now yeah yeah so i think i think in that's what gives me a little bit more confidence in the the future of brook laddie as opposed to the future of glendronic mm-hmm. because I don't know if Rachel Berry would have done the same thing, and not not because that's not a knock on her. It's just a knock on who owns that yeah. distillery now, who sure. owns that conglomerate now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's you know a shift in the whiskey fabric. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, we're looking at distilleries like Glenallachie now, and that's what's getting our money. Um, you know, Glendronic. Are you interested in buying? new release Glendronic, you know, 12s and 15s and, you know, the 18 will recycle itself in what, next year? Yeah, I don't want to pay. I mean, in Ontario, we're paying 85 bucks for a Glendronic 12-year-old. Right. We hardly ever see the 15, the 18. We, the 15 we hasn't been in the LCBO since the, uh, since it was the old 15. There you go. So, I, I don't, I'm not interested at all. And now that I know that they're chill filtering their whiskey... If that's if that ends up being the reality for their whole line, except for like obviously the castring stuff and stuff like that, yeah, I'm not buying them anymore. You like, know, it, they're they're removing of the of the chill filtering label tells me that they're pushing into a certain market. Yeah, and that's the big Asian market. Yep, um, they're going to be making a push into that market, and that market typically you know, doesn't mind chill filtered whiskey. In fact, they probably prefer chill filtered whiskey. That's why yeah. a lot of distilleries still chill filter because when you throw a couple cubes in that, if that thing goes cloudy, you're automatically that, that, 
uh, market base is 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 valuing that whiskey at a, at a lower product. Yeah, and well, if they're trying to compete with McAllen, which is sounds like that's what they're that's where they're headed. Mm-hmm. Now, McAllen doesn't really say much about chill filtration, but we know that they they chill filter pretty much anything that's under forty six percent. Right. Then what what's the appeal of McAllen? It's literally the the overly hated word smooth right like mm-hmm. that's that's the appeal so how are you going to do that you're going to iron out all the viscosity of that whiskey you're yeah. going to you know make it, it it's got to look it's got to have the look as well it can't like you said it can't get cloudy yeah right because that already changes the appeal in the glass with ice when you're serving to your other suits mm-hmm. god forbid you have something with cl- right <laughs> like a little cloudy it's got to appear it. nice exactly you taste right? with your eyes right right exactly Turning back to this 12-year-old, my God, I love this whiskey. Good, I don't right? know. Honestly, for a 12-year-old, what does this cost? About 90 bucks? Is that what you paid? About that, maybe a little bit less. I can't remember exactly. So, funny story with these two is Chateau Louis got a few of them, very small amount, um, and a buddy of mine had to go over and grab them for me, but... They're not even fully released in Alberta, the new batch. So he just managed to get it, and that was it. Uh, gone. But, yeah, if I if we didn't have our boy Daniel down there, I don't know right. what I would do. Yeah. I mean, I can taste the PX in that 12-year-old, mm-hmm. like, a lot. It's very nice and sweet, yeah. and it's, it's well-balanced uh, with the other flavors, too. And somehow they managed to keep that distillery characteristic that I love about Glen Alkey. Mm-hmm. Like, there's that, like, wet rock kind of, like, um, I don't know. I can't even, like, fully describe it's the like notes. It's, like, coastal elements without any of the pea. It's, it's, yep, it's weird to, like, separate those things because you it's usually true. get them together in yeah. Campbelltown and in Isla. But, yeah, you're right. There's this kind of minerality to it. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's interesting when you combo that with like a heavy sherry, which mm-hmm. this is. I mean, yeah. give these to me blind, and I'm probably picking the twelve. To be honest with you, I've always liked the twelve a little bit better than the the fifteen. I haven't sipped this one tonight, but this one's definitely more like away from the distillery characteristic, more sherry powered, in my opinion. I think the 12 has got more complexity. It's got more stuff going on. Mm-hmm. You know, the 15 is that great sherry note, of course. Yeah. The 15 is a sherry, like, it's a sherry bomb, in yeah. my opinion. That was my first sip of it. And, like, you get all that coffee, like, all that stuff that I love about, like, a sherry bomb is yeah. what you get out of the 15. I would honestly wager a small amount of money, but I would wager that there's older whiskey than 15 in there. I wouldn't be surprised. Knowing Billy, yeah, that's just his thing, right? Yeah, I mean that's just that's been his thing, right? Root establishing a brand. I mean, you know, now's the time to be buying these Glen Allen keys is when they're you know trying to enter the market, compete with their, their the the distilleries they just sold, right? Complete with uh, Glendronic. Yeah. See, I guess my only knock on these two whiskeys, sorry, it's not a knock on the whiskeys. It's just uh, my only knock is that. There's no lin- linearity between these two. Like, could you identify these at the, as the same distillery? Hmm. It, that would be hard, I think. Like, th- if someone gave me the 12 blind, I know I would nail it. I know I would. Well, <laughs> you nail, like, crazy shit all the time, so I wouldn't <laughs> be surprised if you nailed it, of course. Well, the 12 for sure, but I don't think I would nail the 15, because what does it taste like? It tastes like sherry. It tastes like... Yeah. It tastes like maybe a Glendronic 18, or maybe, like, the older 18s, yeah. right? Or maybe even, you know, it could, that could, well, probably not a Balvenie 15, but. You know, um, actually, now that you say Balvenie 15, I, I don't see why it wouldn't it could pass. be confused. It could Balvinie pass, 15. right? Yeah. Um, I think Balvenie has this one note that I don't know if I find it as much on the 15 as I do all their other expressions. So that would be interesting. That would be an interesting comparison. But I love these whiskeys. I think they're phenomenal. I think this, if they don't continue to like produce it this way, these two are going to be like legendary as far as like 
what what they think of the 12 year old and 15 year old for Glenn Alkey. Like, mm-hmm. Nobody else is producing a, ten, a 12 and a 15 like that right now. Yeah. And these are uh, laser stamped on the back, so you can see this. So this is uh, fall 2020. Yep. This one uh, as well. Oh, wait. This is 110920. So is that, I don't know if that's month, day, or day, month. They kind of do it differently in the UK, don't they? I think they do it opposite than us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, This one is 020620. So that's either February or June. Right. Right? Yeah. And this one's either November or September. Yeah. So I think it's month, day, year that they do. We do month, we do day, month, year, right? Yeah. Smallest to largest. Yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah, I think I think that thing makes sense. Yeah, so I think this is November 9th, twenty twenty. There you go. Okay. If you think about it, though, when we say when we write down a date or we say a date, we always say month, day, year. That's right. Okay. Well, then we're, we're so, so we're, we're wrong. We're wrong. <laughs> yeah. We uh, always numerically, say it. we write day, month, year, but we say we it say it the way the yeah. British do. Well, I guess we learned from them. We don't say like it's the twelfth of March. We say March twelfth. That's right. Yeah. So, so they win again. <laughs> we thought we had them. Damn. <laughs> the keyboard warriors were ready to type, and then they're like, okay, maybe we'll pass. <laughs> so, honestly, I'm excited to see what, what Billy Walker is going to do because I, I love what he's done so far. Mm-hmm. And, I, I mean, it's no secret I've, I've bragged about... Well, I don't know if it counts as bragging when I have no affiliation to it whatsoever, but I've definitely recommended Glen Alkey to pretty much everybody I know. Yeah. Um, love it. Think it's fantastic. And now that they <clears throat> are continuing down this line, like I just I'm still blown away at the fact that this is a 12 year old whiskey yeah. that they put this much emphasis into and. That's not it. Like their ten-year-old cast strength, they put a lot of work into. Like that, that they're trying to make that look excellent. Mm-hmm. Like it's not just he's not just trying to sell you with what's inside the bottle. He was selling you before you even open the bottle. Mm-hmm. Why? Because that's natural color and it looks like that. Yeah. Right. And I mean, we're all we're all a little bit on the tater side when it comes to like a dark whiskey if we know it's natural color right. until filtered. Right. Yeah. I am. I know. I am. Like I see that dark. I know you are too. Yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> I think a Springbank 10-year-old local barley oh this year goodness. will be a prime example of how we all are. Yeah, <laughs> you know and I mean? it's, like, it's, yeah, it's like... Who knows how it even tastes? It doesn't matter at this point. It just <laughs> looks so damn dark. Like, oh my God, it's 70% sherry. All right, <laughs> see you later. Yeah, exactly, right? Take my money. I'm oh, sorry, it's 100% sherry. Is, is it 100%? Is it 100 I don't know. The the twenty five was seventy percent. Okay, sure. you're right. Sorry, I'm thinking the tw- the new twenty five is seventy percent sherry, and it's which, dark looking as well. Which pisses me off, by the way, because I just bought the twenty five two years in a row. Right. And, and you're like, I'm not gonna buy the twenty five anymore. Yeah, I literally just it's like said that eight hundred, and now you're like, ooh, it's so sherry though. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not know? I yeah. probably I, I probably will pass on the twenty five this year though. Yeah, because... I'm pretty sure the new local barley is one hundred percent sherry. Is it? I think that, so. That's pretty crazy. I'll put it here. More work for me to do. More work for you. Do we have anything <laughs> bad to say about the LCBO today? Yeah, yeah. they don't have any Glen Alkey. I was just going to say that. They don't have any Glen Alkey. So they did get something, though. There was something there for a little bit. Was there something for a oh, little yeah, bit? Oh, yeah, it was that... a 12-year-old PX. Okay. Which is actually a great whiskey. Yeah. And a decent, I think it was like 140 or 150. Okay. So not great. But Curren- that was the Currently no stock of Glen Alkey. Yeah. Yeah. That was the 48%. Uh, the sp- so he does, that's another thing uh, Billy Walker does. He does this series, like it's like a finished series. He calls it that. Mm-hmm. He's, he's allowing the whiskey to be called that. Right. So with Glen Alkey, he has the 10-year-old port, which he also has an 11-year-old port for some reason. He has the 12-year-old PX. I have an 11-year-old, um, I think it's a Marsala, I think. Or I could be wrong. Or is it port? No, there's, a, there's an 11-year-old port as well. Okay. But I do have an 11-year-old Marsala, I believe, upstairs. Marcella or Moscatel? Moscatel. It's a Moscatel. Mm. So he does that finished series. And he did one in a, co- uh, a rye cask, a Koval uh, mm. rye cask, an eight-year-old. He did that with, if you remember, Ben Riek, which I was a big fan of that 22-year-old that he mm. did. Right? That was the Moscatel. 
That was a Moscatel. That 22 Moscatel is the best Ben Rieke I've tried. Yeah, that's definitely one of the best for sure that I've tried as well. Yeah. Um, it seemed like that was his baby with Ben Rieke, but he didn't like put as much... I guess the distillery speaks to him as well. Maybe there's just the quality of the liquid in the distillery wasn't really there. Yeah. So he just did what, what he could with what he had. Mm. Uh, because I have had many Ben Rieks that are just like too hot too plain yeah to this to that right yeah so that could be it but he has this like signature series that he tends to do which I find is pretty cool but then it becomes like too much like there's that whole virgin oak series that I can't uh, like yeah suddenly kind of, now you have 25 freaking expressions and I'm yeah. like well my head's spinning I, I'm like, I can't I'm not buying every single one no you can't and yeah. like I'm sure the collector is like how do I keep up with this I right. can't yeah. right so <laughs> you got the deepest pockets yeah so um, so secondary market finds, obviously with Glenallachy, you know, they've released some older single cast stuff. Uh, you had a bottle of it. Yep. Uh, as far as secondary market, not much to report back, except I did find a really cool, uh, auction item, um, Scotch whiskey auctions. They auctioned off an entire cask. That's, now that's it's got really, you written all over it. Exactly. Everyone knows my dream of having a living cask in my living room, okay? <laughs> I want a freaking breathing cask in my house so I can just tap it when I want to. Uh, so it is rare to see in a public auction, uh, in my experience anyway, I'm not sure if it, this happens all the time or not. I don't think so. Yeah. To see a full cask. So this one, uh, it's a 2015 bourbon barrel, Glen Alkey. Uh The winning bid was 4,200 pounds. So what that gets you is uh, just about 185 liters at cast strength, which was currently 65.5% ABV. Hmm. Um, so it would yield approximately 236 70 CL bottles at cast strength. So it's five years old. Um, and I guess if you did the math on that for 4,200 pounds, you divide that by the number of bottles you'd get, it'd only be like 18 pounds a bottle. Yeah. I mean, you do have to pay the duty, the tax, the bottling fees, plus, plus, plus. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think if we're going to do that, though, we just go to Shelter Point. Because right? <laughs> yeah. we kind of already, like, well, have... The thing is, like, you can't just bring this cast to Canada. Cause no. Now, now it's no longer scotch. Now it's not scotch. Now it's not scotch. But, I mean... But if you're drinking uh, in your living room, do you care what it's who called? Who cares what it's right? called? <laughs> right? <laughs> you give everybody, like, a little, like, bottle to take home. Yeah. It's like a souvenir. All right, so what do you do with this barrel? You bottle it, you keep it. It's only five years old. You probably keep it racked, right? I would find out from the distillery if I can keep it there. If I could pay like a housing fee. Yeah, so you can. So it's it's being held by Whiskey Broker. Their current storage fee is six, 14 60 pounds per year. And insurance uh, costs you uh, a third of a cent... A third and a half of a cent per year per one pound of value of the cask. Did you say it was, so it's 1,300 and something pounds a year? No. It costs you uh, not even a penny, not even a penny of a pound. Oh. Sorry. 13 a third, something, a you A third said. of a cent per <clears throat> pound of value of cask. So it would cost you essentially like 20 bucks a year to store this thing hmm. nothing it's nothing that's not bad yeah, yeah so i would definitely take that option right and let it like i would just ask them for a sample every year then i'd get you know the distillery to bottle it when i thought it was ready probably at year six because that sounds like a cool number and then <laughs> and then uh yeah and i, I think i would I would keep it there for a while, actually. Like, I'm kidding about the six, obviously. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've never tried anything 100% ex-bourbon Glen Alakee before. No. So, magically, this bottle has arrived behind me. And <laughs> um, that's the color of the old one versus the new one. Yeah. So, we're talking like what? Like 10 shades different? Oh, man, more than 10. It's the entire different color spectrum. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Right? Um, I gave that one a 90 in my original review of that. Yeah. Which, maybe looking back, I was a little... I don't know. I don't know if I was too generous. Ralphie gave that the Whiskey of the Year. 
Mm-hmm. Um, what year was that? That was that must have been 2018. 2018. So, or it could have been 2017, because sometimes he goes like into the future. True. Yeah. Or would it yeah. be 20? Yeah. It would have been 2019. Somewhere between 2017 and 2019. 20, yeah, I mean, <laughs> let's bank on 2018. I think that's 2018. 2018. Um, and I did a video sitting at this table. It was live. And I, I did a quick review of it. And I still, like, I just poured myself a little bit. We still have a little bit left from then. And I love it still. Like, mm-hmm. I, think, I think it's fantastic. I, I think it does rival the, the newer one. It's just a different experience. Yeah. Way less on the sherry. But way more on that like distillery characteristic barrel char, uh, coffee finish, yeah. and then that wet rock kind of minerality to it. But this one's got this sweetness to it that you don't get in the new one. And it, so it's got this like really candy note. Yeah, and that yeah. So that's that's probably the distillate, right? Because um, I wonder, I wonder if the like you would think some of the casks impart some sugars, but. The, the sweetness is coming from the distillate for the most part, right? Because the distillate is, it, it's got to have a lot of sugar in it for it to become alcohol to begin with, right? I mean, you could maybe pick that up with, you know, a virgin oak or a, an ex bourbon cask. Um, but yeah, I mean, what do, you, do you know what the maturation type on this? Same, same. So ex virgin, ex bourbon, ex oloroso, and ex uh, PX. And you would never and think that. And obviously just way different percentages. Way different percentages. Who knows if it's like tired Oloroso, tired PX, you know what I mean? You don't know, mm-hmm. right? So, or he's ha- he had it for a few months and like, okay, you know, that was in a PX and Oloroso cask for three months. We're going to, we're going to throw it in, in the vat and that was the de- that was his decision to like make the recipe for the twelve, so it just stayed consistent throughout. Right. But those casks that were in there from twenty eighteen are getting older and older, and that's when this kind of thing happens. Right, right. Longer maturation in those sherry barrels. I don't know, because you said he's investing big big money into sherry barrels every year. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, like I said, they are investing a hundred million pounds a year into their sherry casks. Uh, so you know huge investment um so yeah i mean we think it's going to pay off for them i think so i I love this distillery but yeah we need to get to what's happening in whiskey tube before we get to marking these bad boys okay so what's happening in whiskey tube so have you ever uh you know thrown a bottle in the air and caught it for fun never have you ever terrified to do it have you ever spilt whiskey on the table just because it felt good the only time i spill whiskey is when i'm Pouring out samples for my dram club. <laughs> so a couple uh, very prominent, very successful bourbon channels make their living off, you know, goofing around, stuff like that. And uh, one other uh, whiskey tuber likes to do a little commentary, a little, uh, little poke at uh, some of these whiskey <laughs> well, channels. Oh, and, yeah, uh, I, wonder, I wonder who that may be. <laughs> Honestly, I watched the video today. It's in good taste, man. You did. It was hilarious, first of all. Um, and like, you know what, when people do silly things, they need to be called out on it. I agree. I mean, (laughs) when, uh, you know, when people, uh, you know, enjoy their whiskey and, you know, don't have the crazy budget that you might have, uh, you know, spilling shit on the ground and throwing a freaking expensive bottle in the air, uh, is a little disrespectful. Uh, drinking straight from a bottle, especially something that's like sought after and that a lot of people would love to try yeah and you've put your dirty covid mouth all over it <laughs> COVID uh it's disrespectful in my opinion i think so uh, I, I agree it, I'm, that I'm shit you. triggers me I, I i know this that triggers me i when know this. people drink from straight from a bottle when it's not like something cheap fireball yeah. whatever Anything really? That's gross. Unless it's a bottle of beer, really, don't do it, man. It's not a personal if it's size. Like, if it's if it's a if it's a bottle of Fireball and you're passing around, you know, a party, whatever. It's still gross, but I would still drink that. I would even give them a pass on like a mini. Sure. If it's like a bottle of Jameson and you're going out on the golf course, you take a couple of swigs. <laughs> fine. Right. You got a freaking bottle of bourbon that is super allocated. No one can freaking get their hands on it, and you're treating it. 
you know, like a freaking cheap, cheap hooker. Uh, you know, no offense I'm, to any cheap hookers. <laughs> Uh, that shit fucking triggers me. And, uh, yeah, I made a video commentating on, uh, stuff like that. Uh, it was a lot of fun to record. It was great. Um, it was well put together, actually. It was you know, great. when I was thinking about doing the video, uh, you never really know how it was going to turn out. And when I was shooting it, I wasn't really sure. But then when I was editing it, editing it, um, I thought it was hilarious. I was cracking <laughs> myself up. And I'm like, this is going to be something yeah. really fucking funny. It was really funny. It honestly... Definitely the funniest thing I've seen on Whiskey Tube. And I mean, what makes it, like you said before, it's what makes it funny is it's true. It's true. They, there's guys that do that. They're doing that on their channel. And these guys are getting like stupid amounts of subs. People eat it up. They love it. They <laughs> yeah. absolutely love it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I guess it's a specific power, crowd. All the, power, are... all the power to them. Um, it is what it is. But yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna freaking make fun of that because, uh, like I said, I, 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 that shit triggers me. Yeah. I mean, hey, at the end of the day... At the end of the day, you do what you, you want with, you. Your, with your you bottle, you. but if you're putting that video out there, uh, yeah. you know, you can expect people to comment on it. Yeah, exactly. Like, we expect to get bad comments once in a while. Hey, we read them out. Right? Yeah. Um, Absolutely. You're putting yourself out there. You're putting yourself in a position to be critiqued. And listen, I, I know there's whiskey tubers out there that have stuff to say about what, what we do. You know, I, recently Absolutely. Eric Waite did a, a top 10 list of, of beginner or, or of a YouTuber, of whiskey tubers pretty mm -hmm. much. Uh, luckily, we made the list. But, oh, okay. nice. but um, you know, we're out here. We're, we're doing our thing. And now there's a couple hundred whiskey tubers out there. So... Uh, there's gonna be guys. It's a review of the review. <laughs> right. It's starting to be a little bit like uh, I was joking about this with my friend recently. It's starting to become a little bit like Inception. Right. <laughs> it's like a review of the review of the review. The reviewer of the review. <laughs> you, don't uh, to to, you don't want to go to the next stage though, because you might not come back. All right. Yeah, you won't wake up from that one. <laughs> <You won't. laughs> um, so if uh, if you follow me on Patreon, you can expect a little a uh, little outtake uh, behind the scenes kind of video for that. Love it. Um, yeah, the girlfriend was giving me some weird looks when I had that bottle down my throat. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Uh, so you took it too far, is what you saying? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's all for the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a only fans fans only <laughs> Jeremy style. Yeah, yes. <laughs> um, the other cool thing that's hap that's happened past tense on Whiskey Tube is if you want to know more about Billy Walker, Aquavite, like we said earlier, did a two hour video. Yeah, Aquavite. It's an older one. Yep. Um, ten months, ten months ago. Yeah, from last year. Um, but check it out because uh, yeah, lots of insightful information from Billy Walker and uh, a yeah. great, you know, Roy's lives are always are always epic. So uh, definitely check that out. Yeah. So lots of information in that one, and like you said, Roy's awesome. So uh, he does a good job interviewing. Uh, Ralphie also went to the Glen Alky Distillery, talked one on one with. Billy, well, there's a couple other guys there, but really it was mainly Ralphie and Billy Walker having a conversation uh, on his channel as well. So that's something you want to check out as well. Yeah. Um, really, honestly, he's a legend and Jim McEwen, legend as well. Obviously, they're still alive, so, you know, future legend, I guess. Okay. Um, or le living legends, as, as some put it. Yeah. But I think... Adam Hennett and Rachel Berry have something to offer. I think I think we gotta we gotta acknowledge that this is not a master distiller issue. This is a making money big corporation buying right. distillery issue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, what I do props where props is deserved. Diageo has been doing a good job with their cast strength whiskeys lately mm -hmm. yeah. that whole line of cast strength that they their come annual with, releases i'm really happy that they're doing that yeah because you get a chance to see some of the stuff that a lot of us never thought we would see which mm -hmm. is like a cardu cast strength you know what i mean like mm -hmm. um the 
the Craggy Moor, like where people are like, wow, Craggy Moor has a lot to offer. Yeah, you know? I mean, just away from their entry level stuff. Yeah, you know, it gets real good. I would like to see next year. I hope they do it. A client leash. Yes, that'd be cool. We do need some more expressions of, of distillery uh, official bottling client leashes. Right, that'd yeah. be really cool. Yeah, I think I think to just add to the lineup. Absolutely. Know? Don't take away. Yeah. Keep doing all the ones that you're doing. Add client leash. Add Crown Royal. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I agree. Right. Let's get some of that Crown Royal that they give some good stuff to the U.S. market. But how about some best the best stuff to the Canadian market, dude? I honestly believe that if Crown Royal wanted to, they can blow the socks off of all of North America. Like they have, yeah. they have in that distillery an absurd amount of high, high, high quality whiskey. You have to think so, because they have millions of barrels. Yeah, and they know what they're doing. They've been doing it forever. Yeah. They've been doing it for a long time. Um, stop chill filtering. Stop adding color. We're talking to you, Crown Royal. Listen, please. We're doing you a favor. This is free advice. Yeah. Cast strength, 10-year-old. Sure. Do a cast strength series, actually. I, I advised Wiser to do the same. Not Wiser. Uh, Canadian Club to do the same thing. Yeah. But we'll see if that ever happens. Cast strength 10, 15, and 21. Or 20. Whatever. Do do three cash strength expressions and then you can continue pumping out the garbage that you pump out <laughs> for the bars and whatever else and you'll still make your millions and millions and millions of dollars but do 20,000 10 year old cash strength 20,000 yeah. 15 year old cash strength and 20,000 21 year old cash strength or 25 year old people will blow all kinds of money on that stuff <laughs> you, you're, you're like you, I, I guarantee you, you will they will crown royal will diageo will blow the socks off of the whiskey industry because they like people have no idea what they're capable of i mean why can't you take what you used to do with the xr and just bump up the abv like why would you put that out at 40 percent? right like my exactly. god what a waste there was so the they have an xo that you can tell there's something quality there. I like the XO. Or was yeah. it the select cask? The reserve. The reserve is the great. The reserve, that's the one. The reserve is great. Fancy nice bottle, whatever. That's 43, isn't it? It's 40. Ugh. Of course. I think the ones that are 45 are the... Um, Northern Harvest. The Nor five. Northern Harvest Rye, which, wow, you bumped it up 5% and guess what happened? You won a whiskey of the year and basically like sold out of the product completely. Yeah, and it's going to be a good seller forever. Yeah. The black, I think, is 45 as well. Right. Um, but they have so much potential that yeah. they're not using. And, like, what's stupid is to think that, like, keep doing what you're doing, be status quo, and keep making your millions. Or let's blow the socks off of the entire industry and take control and now make stupid amounts more money than what we were making before. Right. I get it. I get there's like a, a formula for making optimal money with l lack of effort. Yeah. But it doesn't take much to hire a really quality master blender and get it done. Yeah. Agree. And, you know, there's people, uh, there, you know, sample cast there. They're like, wow, this is so good if we did this a single cast. Right. right? Like, no, dump it into the blend. <laughs> <laughs> and then add a whole bunch of water. Right. Yeah. Anyway. And then open the floodgates because this yeah. thing's going right down. Right down to 40. Uh, all right. Let's score these bad boys. Uh, we're just going to score the 12 and the 15. These are the 2020 releases. What do you got? So you go first, the 12. All right. So 12, um, I mean, I love the complexity of this whiskey. Uh, it's got a lot going on. It's heavily sherry, no doubt. Um, but you can pull aspects um, from the other casks as well. Um, for me, this is a very easy 88 out of 100 uh, value. You said this was 90 bucks uh, Canadian. Yep. Um, you know, that's on the higher end of 12 year olds, but you're getting 43, 46%. You're getting non filtered, no other yeah. color. Um, let's bump it up a half mark. I'm going to say that that is a good value by even yeah. at 90 bucks. Yeah. Um, so I'm at 88 and a half out of 100 on that. Yeah, I, I was going to say 89. I think we're, we're right on. Um, if I probably had to remark that, that might drop a little bit as well. Uh, 
we've had a lot of good shit in the last few years. So obviously, the higher the quality, everything kind of just kind of skirts down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, every time you try something epic, your marks drop by one, right? half or one, right? Yeah, I was, I, I'm going to give this one a solid 89, and I will buy that again and again and again if yeah. it stays at this quality. Yeah. Right? I, I will always have that on my bar forever until I die. Um, go ahead with the 15 if you want. Yeah, so 15, um, it's kind of, it's not one note, but it's more one note than the 12 is. Mm-hmm. Uh, still really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a little more rounded, I'd say, uh, than the 12. Yep. Uh, complexity, not as much. Uh, I do. I would take the 12 over it. I think I am probably... Uh, I think probably 86 and a half, 87. I'm going to go 86 and a half on the 15. Okay. Um, and what did you pay for that? That's like 110 I paid. Well, that's not bad. It's only 20, 20 bucks more. Yeah, it's a good price. What... I think the regular market value is about like 120 though. I'll leave value at even, which is definitely just, you know what? It's probably a half mark tick up to at, at that price. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's got to be an uptick. Especially because it's probably older whiskey. Yeah, so let's go Let's go 87 even on, on the 15. I'm going to give that one an 89 as well. Um, I think on any given night, yes, I like the complexity more of the 12-year-old, but this is just so easy to drink. Mm-hmm. And I would definitely buy that again. Um, I think on some nights I might even go higher than that, to be honest with you. But I think more people are going to like the 15 than the than the 12. I really, I think you and I are in line with really liking the distillery characteristics of the of the the 12. Mm-hmm. I think more people, sorry, are going to go with the like the 15 more. Right. All those like sherry heads, all the guys. If that, you're a sherry head, these are for you, 100. Yeah. percent Yeah. Like all the, basically what what I think Billy Walker has done is if you used to like my my style fifteen year old, um, Glendronic, yeah, you're gonna love I my agree. new fifteen year old because yeah. it's mostly PX. Like the the percentage is way higher of PX in this one. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna give them both an 89. I think they're both fantastic. To be honest with you, there you have it. Uh, if you like the content on this podcast, you want to support it a bit more. Check out our Patreons. We are offering. Uh, early access to this podcast for Patreons on every single level of our tier, including the $1 tier. So if you want to get involved for as little as a dollar, you can check us out a little bit earlier than we post this on YouTube and Mm -hmm. on all streaming services. So uh, check us out. And we might, I'm not promising anything, actually, maybe you should say it, something about coins. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> the plan is to get a Whiskey Rant coin. Yeah. Uh, the design still needs to be finalized, but uh, yeah. hopefully that will be our first merchandise item. Yeah, I think that would be pretty cool. I think people will, will like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks so much again for joining us. Uh, until next time, guys. Have a good one. Cheers. Cheers.